Hello everybody, Sindaf here and welcome to DCS World. This is the KA50 Black Shark 2. And yeah, there goes the A10 that I just flew previously. Because uh, instead of quitting out the mission and uh, flying again, I just switched aircraft. So that's going to... Uh, it's going to do something. He's either going to go park somewhere or he's going to take off. Probably shoot me down. And uh, yeah, this is a tutorial on how to start the KA50. We will not be flying this one, not this time, as I don't have a joystick, and a joystick is highly recommended, almost necessary for the helicopters. The helicopters include the KA50 Black Shark, uh, the UH-1H Huey, and the MI-8 MTV. So we shall get right to it. I have a rough understanding of how to start this helicopter up, it's not the most perfect one, but the, tutor the tutorial that comes with the KA-50 is terrible. It's, um, it's a bit poor in quality and it's not interactive. Uh, so first off we need to start the batteries, we flip those on, uh, it recommends you start the intercom up to uh, request startup which we're actually going to do this time I think it'll be different uh, except we can't because Kobolet is not a neutral airfield so they won't let us start up anyway so uh, next we need the fuel pumps forward and aft the uh, the noise is the fuel valves opening turn the fuel quantity meter on which is that one I think and we shall start the APU fuel valve yeah that got that right yeah and uh, start the APU up by pressing the start button there I hope I got that right otherwise that's gonna look awkward and there we go the APU starts up we are gonna close the cockpit door now which is right control and C it's a little different oh it's gonna be loud Right, now the APU started up, we can start up other things. Uh, the inertial navigation system, always handy. Turn the hydraulics on. Just that little one there. Uh, we might as well, whilst here, start up the laser warning receiver and the um, radar warning receiver. I believe they're both similar. I can't remember what the other one is. One's the laser warning receiver. I think the other one might be the... Uh, countermeasures system. I'm not sure. I can't remember that one. Uh, we also need to turn on the fire extinguisher. Not test. On. Right click. Uh, the standby attitude indicate power switch and navigation system power. IFF power and uh, Vision lights on. Yeah, we've got an annoying tone that tells us that the, uh, I believe that tells us the navigation system's starting up. Uh, we should turn on those. And the data links and the radios, that's all radios and data links. Um, basically, we turn this one on to start up this screen, and we turn this one on to start up this screen when we power up. So, first things first, we need the, the left engine to start up, so we click this one on for the left generator, and we also need to come over and turn the fuel on, and also the engine EG, forgot about that one, and uh, we just select the engine here, uh, we hit the start button, turn off the rotor brake, and open the fuel valve. Hopefully that should start because I have the rotor brakes on. I always turn the rotor brake off first. It's kind of helpful. Is it going to start up? Is it going to start up? Is it going to start up? It is not. That's a bad tool. Right, I will hit the start button again. There we go. Now it starts up. 
So then the rotor brakes on. And as we see, the uh, propellers now spin. And we got, yeah, the Cobalt will not take off anyway. So this is our RPM for the engine and the engine temperature. This is our fuel quantity gauge. I haven't done anything with the navigation before because I've never flown. Because I don't have a joystick, but that will be coming tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, we uncage the attitude meter, or attitude indicator, by rolling the mouse wheel down. Uh, yeah, we've got main gear box warning light, we just close that, and that was because we turned the hydraulics on for it. Right, now that's uh, spooled up. We've got it idle here. We need to start the other engine before we can actually fully go anywhere. So we start with the right engine, AC generator, the right engine fuel valve, and the right engine EEG. We flick it over to right engine start. We hit the start button and open the fuel valve, and that should start up. There we go, start straight away. I've got it right this time. And that will spool up the propellers even faster. As you can hear, it's spooling up. Comes up. Uh, this helicopter is really quick to start up. However, it's not easy to fly without practice. My last attempt at taking this helicopter off the ground without joystick resulted in me landing on my roof, two feet away from where I started. The second attempt required me to eject, which is fun in its own right because the uh, propellers explode off and you cap out the top. But now the engine is spoiled up, we can flip this back to the middle, which is APU. And we can just shut that off. Uh, close the APU fuel valve. This one arms the ejector seat. This one arms the weapon control system. Or turns it on at least. One of the two. Uh, we've got the anti collision lights. We might as well turn the lights on. Blade tip lights, formation lights, down is 100%. Uh, we will need that on. We're going to need that's the night vision, and that is what's that? That's more lighting. Don't need lighting. The only other thing we want to do is we want to turn on those for autopilot. We need to turn on the uh, data link which if I just hit something with them out there, we want that up there as well. We want that one there, I think. I believe that's what it tells you to put it at in the tutorial, or at least it shows you to put it at. And we want this one at operate, which is that one. Turn the INU on and turn it on. not start just yet. We need to turn on the dust covers and we don't need anti ice because it's not cold. The navigation lights. You have to click it three times, there's 10, 30, then 100. Right clicking just uh, flashes them, I believe. We've got a HUD on. Now the next thing we need to do is spool up the engines even further with page up and page down. That does the um, and now I'm getting speed message. That does the uh, rotor's RPM. Uh, press it up once for low, twice for uh, automatic, and that will control the RPMs automatically. And things will boot up now that the engine's providing enough power. 
is our little targeting pod. And that is the K50 starting up. That is good to go. I can't do a tutorial on how to use any of the other systems because I have not tried any of the other systems. This is your uh, your collective. Uh, you can control that using the plus and minus keys, just like the A10 or the S25. A laser switch. You got your head-mounted sight system, which is your head-mounted gun sight. So you can uh, acquire and shoot targets with your head. For use with the, um, the gun pods, which I believe I actually have a gun pod on here. Let me check the old camera. I've got two gun pods and Vickers missiles. This, uh, the K50 can't take too much in the way of armament. Usually it takes Vickers missiles, which are the, uh, the big black ones on the outside, and um, either gun pods or rocket pods. It can also take a, um, a cluster bomb dispenser, but being a helicopter, that wouldn't be overly useful. As uh, it works best at very low altitudes. Right, the only other thing I can do is um, check that I've actually got everything on. Yeah, it looks like it. We got um, fire suppression system on. Well, I hope. Hope's on. Uh, this is your counter measure counters and uh, flares. I don't think the helicopter has chat. And uh, we shall um, show you what it's like trying to take off with a keyboard. Like we just hold the plus button, get some speed. The nose will try and take off before the tail, which is oh, aggravating. Holy crap, I did it. We are airborne. We are not going to be airborne for too long. Uh, rudder with the X and Z, the helicopters really need rudder. Oh, we are flapping about all over the place with this keyboard method. Let's try and stable out a little. Jesus Christ. There we go. And I would try and land it, however, you put the gear up with the G button. Go up, and you will be a. It goes up rather slowly, and you will look like a beast in the air once you learn how to fly it, which I still need to do. But the thing is, I got it up, and um, yeah, you can trim this aircraft. So yeah, that is the, um, the K50. I can attempt a landing, but that's going to go really badly. Let's see. Let's um, spin around using the old um, rudder system. Oh, we are not doing very well there. Okay, we've um, we've messed that up didn't like my uh, my change of direction in favor of momentum. Right, now we've turned around. Gee, wow, this is different. I played this little friends with his joystick. He has the um, he has the, uh, the Warthog. The SciTech Warthog, which was built for A10. And it's just pilot so much easier. Right, we're going to slow down a little. Lower the, uh, the old RPMs of the. Let's go down. Lower that completely. Oh, we're dropping like a stone. Right, and the RPMs have come back up. It's on automatic mode. Oh, but you don't want to go straight down in a helicopter because when you get low enough, you'll hit a thing called ground effect, which will basically take all of your lift away. And uh, you'll just drop like a stone in. 
I'm going a little quick at the moment, so I need to um, flare up a little. You can hear the engine struggling with my movements. So the only way this thing actually turns is it uh, changes the direction of the uh, rotor blades to provide more lift in a certain area, so if I want to um, nose up, it will provide more lift in the front. Okay, we're now 100 metres off the floor, I think it's metres or feet. We are coming in very quickly. We have hit ground effect, this is what ground effect does, it just completely kills your helicopter. And we're down, oh that was a bounce. Oh, hello. Something's broken. But we're down. We're down. That was better than my first attempt at landing. Trust me, uh, I kind of rolled it sideways and broke it. But that is a helicopter landed. I buckled the right gear but, and the uh, the nose gear. I also broke the, uh, the target gear in the front. Because the, uh, the Cheval targeting computer is in the nose Watch of the ground. Yeah, I'm watching the ground. It's dying. The uh, the targeting computer for both the K fifty and the SU twenty five is in the nose, so if it if the nose gets shot off then you can no longer target anything. Uh, but yeah that was the landing. Next will be that was just terrible. I'm not even gonna bother shutting it down I don't actually know how I assume you close the engine valves stop the engines and uh, put the brakes on, but I'm just going to eject so you can see that instead. Uh, we shall just left control and double, triple tap E and watch it explode. There we go. Fancy. And land. And of course you might have heard my cat meow at me because he's hungry. But he's always hungry. And there we have it. And we shall turn around and we shall just mosey on back to my aircraft. Which is still spinning. And that is the KA-50. Um, yeah. In pieces at the moment. We blew out the roof. Broke the nose. Broke the gear. Broke everything. So, um, yeah. Uh, like and favourite and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more and i shall see you later